Countdown to kickoff continuing, heading out to Green Bay, Wisconsin with Justin Felder of WLUK-TV. Let's talk about those Super Bowl winning Packers. It seems as though this offseason spotlight was mainly focused on the Eagles. Do the players in the locker room feel that way? You know, we asked them a lot about that once we kind of got everybody back in camp, and a lot of them said, hey, thanks, you know, taking the spotlight off the defending champions, putting it on the Eagles, taking some of the pressure off. And these guys, you know, Green Bay's a smaller market, much smaller than a Philadelphia, and these guys don't mind, you know, staying under the radar a little bit. A lot of passionate fans here, and, hey, they don't mind if the spotlight's going to be turned somewhere else. They're very very much only concerned with playing football. Now, Dom Capers came in. He molded a defense into top five in most of the rankings, excluding the run defense. However, overall, how much does he mean to this team? A lot. And one of the things you hear a lot from the defense and from Coach McCarthy and from Coach Capers is how the continuity keeping him in place has really improved what they can do. I mean, Capers has a complicated system in his 3-4 defense, and as they build up years and years and they have a lot of the same guys returning year after year, they can do more, they can get better at what they do, and the communication is a lot better. I mean, they've had A.J. Hawk as the guy in the middle who calls the plays. He hasn't moved for a while. He's getting that continuity there. It really, really helped, and it really, you know, it, it confuses the other offenses. They're able to do a lot with a lot of different moving pieces. You see Charles Woodson plays corner, plays nickel, plays safety. And as they get that experience in the defense, they're able to do a lot more. The offensive line, is that the position that needs the most improvement going into this year? You know, I think uh, coming off last year, I don't think people would have identified it as really a position of need. But in the preseason, they gave up 16 sacks. Now, obviously not all those by the first team offensive line since you know, time split up. But 16 is a really high number in four games, especially when the face of your franchise is Aaron Rodgers taking snaps. Uh, they... The Packers took a interesting route. They kept only eight offensive linemen on the active roster, which is a little low. Uh, so only three backups. So they could get into a case where they're really stretched thin if injuries hit them particularly hard in one game. Uh, you also have Chad Clifton as the left tackle, has been in the league for a very long time, uh, has been playing at a Pro Bowl level, but when he has to deal with uh, Julius Peppers twice a year, Jared Allen twice a year, is that going to get to be a problem as he gets you know, further into his career? They're also installing T.J. Lang at left guard in place of Darren College, who left for the Cardinals. So I don't know that it's a weakness at this point, but it's definitely something that people have their eyes on, especially when they face those speed pass rushers like Julius Peppers of the Bears. With Mike McCarthy, we have seen, and it appears to be, a very level-headed guy, a straight shooter. What kind of a shift does he run out there? Very organized very detail oriented if uh if if you listen to mike mccarthy talk that's what he wants you to take away is they are very regimented um you know like i said before about the team the team takes on the personality of the coach in this one he loves playing football loves talking about football loves strategizing does not seem to particularly want to do much else and you, you understand that when they're winning but he is a very you hit the nail on the head straight shooter um he very meticulously organized with the schedule i mean you know he he hates when one little thing is off. He has his practice time down to the minute, and usually in training camp when we get to be there for the whole practice, he'll give one of the first things he'll say at the beginning of his press conference is, okay, we were three minutes uh, ahead of schedule today, which is good. We were five minutes short, or we were five minutes long, which is bad. So he's very meticulous, very detail-oriented, and the team really has taken on that personality. The team dealt with a ton of injuries last year. One of the guys they're getting back, Jermichael Finley, how much more dangerous of a team is this when he's healthy? I think much, but on the other hand, and it's really been one of the big stories of the week, is they only get to play with one football. You have Jermichael Finley coming back. Greg Jennings really enjoyed a breakout season last year with Jermichael Finley injured, plus Donald Driver, Jordy Nelson, James Jones. The question is, and I guess you can blame the media for asking it before you know they've even thrown a pass, is everybody going to get their touches? Now, with Sir Michael Finley, obviously, that creates a ton of mismatches. I mean, I don't know who's going to cover him. He is big and fast and athletic in the middle. So if you double-team him, it's going to leave guys on the outside with one-on-one -on -one coverage. And, and that's really what it comes down to is uh, another favorite Mike McCarthy – phrase is the defense dictates where the ball goes so if they're going to concentrate on Jermichael Finley they're more than happy to go outside so it, it's going to create a lot of mismatches and force the defense to really you know pick their poison essentially let's head out to Facebook our Facebook page 
Facebook.com slash TYT Sports. Jake Brown asks you, Justin, what are your guys' thoughts on the running back situation at Green Bay? I think it's going to be interesting how the carries are split. You have Ryan Grant, who was on injured reserve along with a whole ton of other people last year, coming back. He's a 1,000-yard back in his history, so he is obviously – he has the resume, but last year, uh, James Starks was a sixth-round pick out of Buffalo. He spent the first half of the season on the physically unable to perform list, came in and really lit it up in the playoffs. So it did very well, has looked very good in the preseason. Uh, he's still a young guy, so the presumption is that it will be split carries, which would be, you know, good keeps some mileage off of both those guys. But it, it, I think a lot of people are anxious to see how the carries are split. I think it's a strength, though, and also look out for Alex Green third round pick out of Hawaii to jump in on that third down back roll, which was held by Brandon Jackson, who left for Cleveland. And Brad Nelson to you. There's debate that B.J. Raji might be moved from nose tackle to defensive end in the 3-4. Wouldn't that make sense since he is young, quick, and the Packers' best rusher? Well, there's, there's uh, not debate. He is definitely going to be spending some time at defensive end. Uh, he spent you know, most of his career so far playing the nose. What they're going to do is, with Colin Jenkins leaving, went to the Eagles, free agent deal, um, if they move B.J. Rogers to the outside defensive end, one thing that that really brings is they can play him opposite Clay Matthews. So if you're going to double or triple team Clay Matthews on one side, it's going to make it tougher to double team B.J. Rogers. So I think uh, – that's something for fans to really keep an eye on, big number 90. Where is he going to play? Is it going to be in the middle? Is it going to be on the side? Dom Capers has what he calls his psycho package, where he'll have all his defensive linemen standing up and kind of walking around the line. We saw that, I believe, zero snaps during the preseason, so they're keeping that one under wraps. But uh, he will definitely be, as far as we know, getting at least some time at defensive end, moving Ryan Pickett back to the nose where he played his entire career up until last year. Lastly for you, over under 11 and a half wins this year for the Packers. That's a good number. I, I would say probably over right now. I think they're a 12 or 13 win team, probably a team that can win the division. And remember, Super Bowl winners, but they were a wild card team last year. Uh, they have a, a very difficult schedule, as they always are. But I think you're looking at a Vikings team that is kind of in transition right now. You're looking at a Bears team that one of their best weapons, Devin Hester, is kind of you know, going to be. I wonder how he's going to be impacted by the new kickoff rules. And you're looking at a, a Lions team that's really on the way up. We'll see if they can cross that line into a great team this year. I think the Packers can be a 12-13 win team. They certainly have the talent, but I think offensive line depth is something to watch. 